What's happening everybody and welcome to the Royal Kennels YouTube channel. In this video y'all we are going to talk about backyard ear cropping. I know it's not, um, it's not a popular topic but we're going to talk about it today. I guarantee you don't want to miss it. Alright guys, we are back. Today we are going to talk about backyard ear cropping. And like I always say, we can't make anybody do what we want them to do. The best thing that we could do is educate them so that when they do it, they do it properly. A lot of American Bully breeders are doing the backyard ear cropping thing. But we all know that American Bullies aren't the only breed that are getting the ear cropping. And when we do them on our dogs, we are doing them for not only a better presentation, but it's also recommended in the standard. It's not a guideline. You don't have to have a crop. But it is recommended to have that show presence. Also, I don't know if you guys ever experienced this breed with long uh, floppy ears. I had one dog that I kept the ears on, my very first one, and I struggled with a lot of ear infections. Um, I brought her to the vet on numerous occasions, and the only thing that we can come up with, the type of lifestyle that the dog was living with the floppy ears, it was causing a breeding ground for infections and like mold and yeast in the ear. So in this video, we are not just gonna talk about the ear cropping, but if you're gonna go to a backyard cropper, like we said, make sure that this is the most professional backyard cropper that you can find. Make sure that he uses clean utensils, like um, fresh razors or fresh shears. Make sure that he's using dissolvable stitches um i i used to um deal with a guy who used fishing string and in that fishing string if you leave if you left the um stitches in for over seven days it was cutting around the ear so that's a no-go if you use dissolvable stitches on day four they started dissolving just like this puppy this puppy was cropped friday the stitches are popped and the healing process has begun. You know, I've washed these ears already. I've cleaned them up real good. I put the proper medicine. I would uh, recommend everybody, you know, putting Neosporin on it, maybe the first and second day and then just letting them dry out after. But use, um, use somebody who knows what they're doing. Use somebody who has experience. I know back in the day, you know, we all hear stories or we know of people used to strap the puppy down with no sedative to put your puppy to sleep. You know, make sure that they're clean. Make sure that everything that they're using, they're using it for the first time. You know, uh, make sure that the job is, is done right. <clears throat> This little puppy has a great ear crop. And you can see how the puppy plays that it doesn't affect its life at all. Her um, ears cropped at seven weeks old, right before she turned eight weeks. And I would say the younger, the better. Definitely the younger, the better. Um, the older they are, the cartilage 
is a lot tougher. There's a lot more veins in the ears. So if you're going to do this practice, I would recommend that you do it in the age of seven weeks to 12 weeks of age. And make sure that the puppy's heart has been checked out. If you have a puppy with like a heart murmur, the, um, the sedative is going to possibly stop the heart. So we don't want that. You want a healthy puppy if you're going to give it medicine. Um, you want your puppy to have its first shots. You want it to be free of any type of parasites. You want to make sure that this puppy gets a thorough check before it's given any type of medicine. So if you're going to do it, do it professionally. Do it at an age to where it's not as harmful for the puppy. We know people are going to do it. I do it. Because look, I'm showing you this puppy. I love, I love the presentation that it gives off. You know, when it was, watch these ears stick straight up. When them ears stick up, she's trying to look back. She's a smart one. Hey, mommy. Hey, mommy. And she, look, she loves me. Yeah, we, I've been, I've been spending a lot of time with her. And you know that's one thing after the after the crop, you know you take good care of them. You know you make sure that they're all right. You know um, one thing about when you're doing these cropping, make sure the puppy doesn't eat 12 to 18 hours before its procedure. You know, and you know a lot of people say, well, if you're gonna do it, why don't you use the vet? Well, a lot of the vets. They still do the practice, but it's not something that they want to do. And a lot of the breeders know that the vets don't want to do it, so they raise the price up super high, and they don't do as good of a job as your breeders. You know how to crop the ear based on its, its head. So if it's not a breed that you're too familiar with, you're not going to give it the best job. Mwah. You know, you could tell the person that did this puppy is extremely experienced. You know, people are going to do whatever they want regardless. You know, you could bash them, you could do whatever you want. It's not illegal, guys. It's not illegal in the States. It's not. Now, if it becomes illegal later on down the line, then that's a whole other topic. But it's not illegal, so people are going to do it. And if they're going to do it, educate them on how to do it properly. Share this video with them. Let them see it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and God bless y'all.